All right, let's talk some Cincinnati Bengals coming oh so close to winning the Super Bowl. Where do we go from here? Because, I mean, they were so close. And it's impossible to not be disappointed if you are a Cincinnati Bengals fan. You wanted to see your team win the championship so badly. It seemed like they had it within reach and in the last few minutes. I mean, literally, they were up in the Super Bowl at the two-minute warning. That's what happened here. They weren't able to pull it off and get the victory. So disappointing for Cincinnati, no doubt. Obviously, the flip side is it's an incredible season. No one expected them to make the playoffs. I mean, it was a hot take to say Cincinnati would make the postseason. That was a hot take. They ended up going all the way to the Super Bowl and nearly winning it. So you could argue it was kind of a weaker season this year as well that helped them. I don't think that's unfair. I do think it was a weaker season. I think that there was a little bit of a lack of the high-end talent teams, and Cincinnati was able to take advantage of that. Although, you know, Kansas City was still really good. The Titans were still really good. So, again, uh, I think it's fair to say they might have better, tougher competition next year and in, in the future. But still, uh, they did some great stuff. But the reason why I wanted to bring that up is just because it's important to make sure you don't try and still win the 2021 Super Bowl. You got to now win the Super Bowl next year if you're going to win it. Let's talk about how they can do that. Where do they go from here? Let's talk about their cap situation because they have $57 million available in cap space. That's very good, although they got some guys they got to sign to. So like right here, these are you know some of the free agents they have. You see cap space at the top, $57 million. Uh, you got Riley Reef, who, again, maybe not all these guys you're going to re-sign, but if you don't re-sign, you have to find a replacement for. So Riley Reef, uh, he's, you know, he got $7 million last year. I'm projecting probably $7 million again this year. That's all these, you know, the lines you see, the numbers you see next to all these guys. That's how many millions of dollars I'm projecting they will get in free agency. That's kind of what I'm projecting it would take for them to keep them. So like Larry Ogunjobi, uh, you know, again, $6 million-ish. That's kind of what he got last time. CJ Uzuma, uh, this is actually sports track, projected he would get about $8 million. Jesse Bates, $14 million. And Quentin Spain, who, listen, People are going to kind of say, okay, a couple of these offensive linemen just let them walk. They were bad. Well, actually, no. Like, Riley Reef was pretty good, one healthy. And Quentin Spain was one of their better offensive linemen. Now, he got beat on that final play by Aaron Donald, but everyone gets beat by Aaron Donald. That's There's no shame in that too much. So, the, the obvious other point to bring up is if you do let some of these guys walk, well, then you have to replace them as well. So, that's another factor. But, you know... Uh, for someone like Ogunjobi, could you maybe let him walk? You could. Your defensive line looked fine without him, but do you want to let him walk? No, of course not. CJ Uzuma, I would assume you don't want to let walk. He, you know, him and Burrow have a good connection. He's a good tight end. And Jesse Bates, you really don't want to let walk. I mean, he, you know, was great this postseason. Even a couple other guys like Kevin Huber and Eli Apple, they're not star players by any means, but if you let them walk, you do have to replace them with somebody. So that's where things get interesting. So if they wanted to re-sign everybody I have on this list, they would need $47 million. So they'd still have $10 million left over. So now let's go over here. Uh, these are some players that they could cut. And I want to be clear, I'm not saying they should cut any of these guys, just that these are the options. These are the guys who would clear up a decent amount of cap space. I mean, listen, there's some guys that'll clear you up a couple million here or there, but I'm mostly focused on the guys who would make a significant dent in it. We're kind of talking, you know, talking about the macro stuff, not the micro stuff. Uh, Trey Waynes, who, I don't know, I think that if you wanted to cut him, you could, you would save 11 million, but you also could just hope that like, you'll get a healthy Trey Waynes and then that's kind of the replacement. You don't have to worry about Eli Apple because you have Trey Waynes. Someone like Tyler Boyd, listen, I've seen teams do stuff like this where they say, hey, we already have two great receivers. We, you know, we can, we don't have to pay 7 million for a third. Uh, I think that would be silly. I think that a lot of times in football, it comes down to who's your third best option. And the reason why the Bengals were in the Super Bowl is because of their great receiving core. I think you, you keep that great is what I would do. But again, I'm just throwing it out there because that is an option on the table for Cincinnati, even though I think it'd be insane to take it. Same thing like Von Bell. I think Von Bell is really good. I'd like to keep him. Trey Hopkins, you could consider. He's not a fantastic center, and maybe you look for an upgrade. You cut him and sign somebody else, and that way you're only having to pay a few extra million for somebody else. Over here is really what Cincinnati is probably already looking at. I think Bengals fans have already looked at, you know, who are the interior offensive linemen who are free agents coming up? Who is someone that maybe we could potentially get? Uh, this is, I, I looked at a, a PFF 
article where so that's where i'm getting the the numbers on the right that's their projections for how much they will get in free agency so just being clear there so just some of the guys they have ryan jensen who the c next to his name that's because he's a center so again if you want to upgrade with hopkins i mean Again, you think about how great this team would be if they somehow got Ryan Jensen and Brandon Sheriff on their team. That would be absurd. Sheriff, great guard there. And Jensen, who was a Pro Bowl center this year. And Tampa Bay is in a cap crunch. They might not be able to afford him or you know be able to tag him or anything. So maybe that's what you do. Uh, so, you know, a couple of those guys would be key. You have Lakin Tomlinson of the 49ers, Connor Williams of the Cowboys, and James Daniels of the Bears all could be available. And like I said... Even if the Cincinnati Bengals decide to re-sign everybody, they'd still have $10 million left over. So they could absolutely make a run at one of these guys and should make a run at one of these guys. Now, do you need Brandon Sheriff? I don't know, but I mean, you would like him. But even like, you know, listen, uh, one of the other guards, I think, would go a long way. Or even just improve the center position, if not both, I think would go a long way. Because again, you can restructure stuff too. It's not like you, you know, only get what's on the cap. This isn't hockey. You can, you know, you push money off to the future in this scenario, which they might decide to do. So yeah, for me personally, offensive line has to be a huge priority this offseason. Uh, I still think, and quite frankly, to me, this is why the Jamar Chase, Panay Sewell thing was such an interesting debate and why I, I still do stand by. I think that Jamar Chase was the correct pick here. It's hard to argue the contrary with what we just saw, although people still try it, largely because there was pressure in the Super Bowl. But uh, I think a big, big part of it is like, well, hey, they already had the left tackle and it's just easier to get like, you know, a good guard than it is to get an elite wide receiver. And if you have five solid offensive linemen, that goes a lot further than having three solid wide receivers. So that's why I like that move and why the groundwork has been laid. Now they have to just, you know, pick up the pieces and they have the tools to do so. And building through free agency, something they've been very key on doing, they might need to do it again. And I wouldn't hate it if they did do it again. I think it could make a lot of sense, quite frankly. Again, it's a weird situation for the Bengals. It's not a disappointing year. You went to the Super Bowl, but now the expectations are a lot higher. And quite frankly, Next year, doing this, going to the Super Bowl and losing, it's not going to feel the same. Uh, you're not going to feel like, ah, it was a great season. You're going to feel like, man, we had an opportunity and blew it. This is where we are. The Bengals are in a spot where they want to make sure that they can pull off a Super Bowl victory and, and win it. Um, and so to do that, offensive line has to be the key thing you look at. And don't be afraid to upgrade at stuff and you know build depth in areas that you already, I don't think it'd be the worst thing in the world to get a new corner as well. And you have this Joe Burrow rookie contract situation. Take advantage of it the best you can because the Bengals have a great window to try and win a Super Bowl. I'm not betting against them by any means. I think that, you know, the, the groundwork is there. The, the you know, the base of the building is there. Now you just got to build the exterior. Uh, and, you know, that's going to be really start with at right guard, get a right guard and work from there. Uh, that's what I think. What do you guys think? What are your thoughts on all of this interesting stuff? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.